This episode of D News is brought to you by Audible. Cows are farmed, pigs are farmed, plants are farmed, and there's a debate about the health benefits of all of those things. But what about fish? Is fish farming okay? Hey everybody, thanks for watching D News today. I am Trace. We learned to fish long before we learned farming or to domesticate animals. And today we eat so much fish that there is no way that we can catch all of them and keep the practice both sustainable and affordable. So instead of catching them all, we farm a lot of fish too. That alone isn't terrible, but how it's done can sometimes be kind of terrible. In 2012, global fish farming, called aquaculture, passed global beef production. But have you noticed farmed salmon and wild salmon look a little different? The wild are orange pink, and the farmed are a light pinkish. They're not quite orange. Salmon are carnivorous fish. In the wild, they eat smaller fish, so they can't be fed grains or soya on farms like beef can. They need to eat other fish in order to survive. Farmed fish don't get the same nutritional input as wild fish, obviously. Salmon meat gets that orange-pink color from eating tiny shrimp and other crustaceans, the shells of which contain carotenoids, an antioxidant, which is the same stuff that makes carrots orange. According to Stanford's Center for Environmental Science and Policy, one pound of salmon takes about 2.4 pounds of other wild fish to produce, usually sardines, anchovies, mackerel, herring, and so on. But since farmers have to make the feed for their fish, they usually grind up smaller ones to produce fish oil and meal, and then compress it into pellets that can be then fed to the salmon. Obviously, some carotenoids are added too because the fish need them from growth and reproduction, as well as their orangey pink color. Since 2004, though, the World Wildlife Fund has worked with salmon farmers to make farming more sustainable and to fight diseases that may pop up on the farms. And the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch program is taking note of improvements in the aquaculture industry, noting that there are a couple of places where salmon farming is actually done right. But some farmers are replacing the fish oil that they are supposed to be putting in their feed with vegetable oil, which is cheaper and more sustainable. A new study from Norway's National Institute of Nutrition and Seafood Research has found this practice might be harming the fish, but also those eating it. According to their results, Norwegian farmers were replacing as much as two-thirds of the salmon's natural oil intake with vegetable oil in 2013. They were quick to point out, by the way, this was just in Norway. This is not globally. To see how this major dietary change would affect the salmon, and thus the people eating it, they fed salmon to mice. Those mice who ate the fish oil salmon had a healthy balance of omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids and a healthy liver, even though they were eating a lot of salmon, like 80% in some cases. On the other hand, those who ate the vegetable oil salmon did not have a healthy balance of fatty acids and had an accumulation of fat in their liver called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So maybe farmed salmon isn't quite as healthy, but wild salmon are still really expensive, three times as much as farmed salmon in some markets. However, many farmers are banding together to make salmon farming sustainable, affordable, and good for the fish and for the future. The Norwegian researchers closed their study best, saying that yes, the vegetable oil-fed fish weren't as healthy, but getting some omega-3 fatty acids are better than none at all. How do you feel about fish farming, though? Better or worse than regular farming? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more DNews, and we would like to take a moment to thank Audible.com for backing DNews as well. Audible has over 150,000 audiobooks to choose from that can be downloaded to whatever device you're using. If you're interested in the plight of farming, check out Michael Pollan's In Defense of Food, where he outlines how to be the best omnivore you can be for the planet and for yourself. That guy is great. And you can get that or any other audiobook, you don't have to pick that one, for free by going to audible.com slash dnews, and you'll also get a 30-day free trial of their service. Thanks for watching, everybody. You can find us on Twitter at dnews. You can also find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks again.